Hey friends, welcome back. So in today's session, we're gonna talk about what is the best form of exercise for your heart? Continuous cardio versus resistance training slash interval training. So we're gonna talk about a recently published study that I thought was really fascinating. And what is really unique about this study was conducted by researchers in Israel. They followed individuals after they had a cardiovascular event, i.e. a heart attack or myocardial infarction. And what they sought to see is what is best for not just the heart and the electrochemical changes and the QT dispersion, these are all objective ways to sort of quantify the electrophysiology of the heart that can be, there can be aberrations in that in a, after a heart attack, but they also wanted to see what form of exercise was best for reducing visceral fat and waist circumference and other approximations of having a sudden cardiac death uh, or an event and an arrhythmia, because it turns out that visceral adiposity in particular is linked with poor outcomes in people who have already had a cardiovascular event, i.e. a heart attack. Now, I'm sharing this with you because as we talked about on many other videos and podcasts over the past several years, heart disease, despite all the COVID-19 stuff, was the number one cause of mortality in the US and throughout the world for the past two years. It claimed more than twice as many lives than did COVID-19. It was also the number one risk factor for severe COVID-19. So we would like to help people better prevent having a heart attack in the first place. And if they have high blood pressure or cardiovascular risk factors, we want to prevent them from having uh, future complications down the road. So let's talk about what this study found is they, they randomized individuals to two different groups. Group A, let's just say, did continuous cardio for about 45 minutes several days per week. Group B, and I'll share with you the image that conveys the story much better than I can right here, did a combination of what they called super circuit training. So individuals would say do sets of say, arm curls or leg extensions or squats, and in between those sets of resistance training, they did an interval on the, on the bike or on the treadmill. So it was a combination. It wasn't just continuous cardio, it was pairing or butting up resistance training with some cardio. So that's why they called it, they actually called it super circuit training. The point here is you don't need to copy exactly what they did, but you need to understand when you go to the gym, instead of just going on the elliptical for 45 minutes or going on the elliptical to the exercise bike to the treadmill, maybe what you could do is do a set of squats, then go on the on a, a ski erg, or then go on a concept two rower, and go back and do more squats and and so on, um, and pairing resistance training with interval training, because what these scientists found is that combination, it actually improved all sorts of cardiovascular related biomarkers that are linked with increased protection after people have a myocardial infarction or heart attack but it led to significantly increased reductions in waist circumference compared to the group that only did continuous cardio. This is really important, and I wanna, before we continue on here, I would like to quote the scientists and the researchers because they talk about why this is so important, particularly as it relates to long-term cardiovascular risk reduction. But before I do, my friends, I just wanna welcome you all back. Thank you for being here. Thank you for hitting that like button if you're enjoying this video, and thank you for leaving a comment below that tells the algorithm that videos like this should show up in other people's feeds. So um, that goes a long way. And I'll also put links to the references and so forth to this paper below. So the scientists go on to say, in cardiac patients, high intensity interval training is safe, feasible, and more effective than continuous aerobic training in several outcome measurements, peak oxygen consumption, et cetera. Super circuit training, which is the resistance training paired with intervals on a cardio machine, like 30 second to a minute intervals, they say is a novel type of training that introduces and, and combines training modalities, resistance training followed by aerobic exercise intervals. Okay, so they go on and talk about all these different aspects, but here's what I wanna share with you that is very important. They say, these results are of special interest in cardiac rehabilitation as studies have shown that obesity can increase the risk of sudden death due to arrhythmic disorders, okay? So this is really important for people who have had a heart attack. There's electrochemical changes that are worsened if you have the presence of obesity concomitantly or at the same time. So if, you've, if you want to prevent heart disease or having sudden cardiac death due to this electrochemical abnormalities, you would like to pick the exercise that not only helps the heart, but also helps reduce obesity. And here's what's so important is the super circuit training or the resistance training paired with the intervals on an, an aerobic type machine 
more effectively change visceral fat. It reduced visceral fat. So that's what I would like to get to. But this is safe for people who have had a, a heart attack. This is really important. And I just want to pause and sort of emphasize this. When people have had a heart attack, I think they feel as though, you know what, I'm just going to go to the gym and do something really light and sort of easy because I don't want to stress out the heart. But as this paper showed, doing circuits and increasing the intensity is actually favorable and it improves the QT dispersion and increases HRV. It reduces a, a proxy of HRV that is favorable. So let's go on to talk about the anthropometrics or proxies. And so these are changes in waist circumference. The scientists say, moreover, only the super circuit training group, which again is the resistance training paired with the aerobics, only this group uh, presented a significant reduction in waist circumference from pre to post test. And so again, same duration of overall exercise. So this flies in the face a little bit of the calories in, calories out sort of model or uh, sort of the premise, the idea that you just need to go to the gym and burn calories if you want to burn fat because you need to burn 3,500 calories to burn a pound of fat. Well, I could tell you that the, the total time of exercise is actually more in the cardio group versus a super circuit training resistance interval group. But these individuals lost more belly fat because they created more oxygen debt. They built more lean muscle mass, presumably. Um, they, they changed some of the different hormones that are favorable due to the type of training. Okay, so that's really important to understand here. And the amount of fat was quite significant uh, that, that was lost. We're talking about, in terms of the waist circumference, pre and post, again, after 12 weeks, there was no change in the group that did the cardio. No change. They did basically an hour of exercise continuously. They did various different machines. But the waist circumference change uh, in the super circuit training group went from, it was 98 centimeters at baseline down to 94. And this was a p-value of P0002. So very statistically significant, meaning that if you reproduce a study, you know, you would, you would get this result 99, 999 times out of 1,000, which is really interesting. And so they lost, on average, six more centimeters of belly fat by just comparing resistance training and combining that with a cardio. So in summary, if you know someone, maybe you have a family member that had a heart attack, or you know someone that has high blood pressure, they're at high risk for having a heart attack, and you know they go to the gym, which is good, or you know they go out and walk, you need to nudge them to encourage them that they might get a little bit more mileage out of that time invested in their exercise by doing resistance training and cardio and pairing those together. Now you're gonna have to find out the split, the interval, maybe you work with a personal trainer. What I like to do when I go to the gym sometimes or even work out at home is I'll do sprints on an echo bike, I'll do sprints on the carol bike, I'll do, you know, and this is not all in one workout, but I like to switch up the cardio machines and change the intervals that I'm doing, the types of intervals that is. So sometimes it's on a Concept 2 or a Ski Erg, you know, it can be 45 seconds intense with like a 12% incline on a treadmill. Like you can really vary the intensity of these intervals, but instead of just sit around on your iPhone and text people in between sets of resistance training, you can do an interval, okay? And that's exactly what this study found, which I think is quite interesting. So in summary, it's safe and effective for individuals who have had a cardiovascular event or a heart attack to do exercise. But the types of exercise that they do are not equivalent. You can get more mileage out of pairing resistance training with some intervals, some cardiovascular intervals, and get a little more added fat loss reduction, which can ultimately help prevent the odds of having a future event or sudden cardiac death because um, the arrhythmias and so forth are linked with belly fat and the arrhythmias are our future of, of sudden cardiac death. So friends, hopefully you found this helpful. Thanks for sharing this video with someone that you know that might be at high risk for having an event and encourage them to start resistance training and to start doing intervals. It's safe, it, it actually improves the electrophysiology of the heart and helps to accelerate the loss of belly fat, which is really key. We'll catch you in a future video down the road. Bye now.